Hello and welcome. My name is Sharon and this is Tree of Witches Tarot and this is another unboxing. And this one's from US Games again. This one is the Fyodor Pavlov. Is that how you say that? The Fyodor feels weird to say. So that's what I'm very excited about. Oh, a bigger box than I had anticipated. Got a lot of boxes thrown around me. I'm doing a lot of unboxings. So we're gonna zoom in. Okay, well the lighting on that unboxing was so terrible that I'm going to do the rest of the video now. So I just want to give you a better look at the book in better lighting. It's super nice. And it does have, so it just dives right into <clears throat> little intro and then and there is a lot of information in here on the creative process of each card and the interpretation and the meaning and the imagery. It's definitely a great book. Definitely helps with this deck too. And then a little bit on some spreads. And then about the artist. Okay. So there's that. And then it comes in this box. It's not too big. I probably won't keep it in this box though. I tend not to keep decks in bigger boxes. And this is one of the nicer ones though, and it's not too big. So I wanted to do this walkthrough a little bit differently. I'm sure there's going to be a million walkthroughs of this. So I'm going to zoom in. Okay, so I wanted to do my first impressions at the same time that I did some pairings. So we're going to divide this deck up. So this is as good of a place as any. It's still in order. And then I wanted to just see what oracles I had would go with it. So I'm going to start with one that I have been thinking about letting go, and that is the Oracle of Reflections by Celia Nelsville. So I thought maybe the muted tones would go with this. Let's get something to point with. So the Fool is very cool. Like this cat, like you know, in that um, kind of a Harlequin outfit there. And then we have the Two of Cups over here. It's fairly traditional. Other than it's two more male presenting figures, but rather than no male and female. Magician, he's got all his things there, like that. And then this Three of Cups, I just love that. It's so beautiful. Don't know if I need to see more about the Three of Cups. Pretty traditional. So it, you know, it's a clone for the most part. I'm not saying that in a bad way. Beautiful high priestess. The artwork in this is just stunning. I'm so glad this went mass, mass market so we could all get a copy. I like how one side of the veil is lifted and you can see the cosmos behind there. And then over here we have the Four of Cups, pretty traditional. Got the hands coming out with the cup and the guy ignoring the cup. Not sure how I feel about this pairing though. I mean, color wise, it does go pretty well. <coughs> Just 
just not sure, you know, like the Phoenix, I don't know. Did I think it goes with this? I don't know. I might keep it for a while, see how it works out. The Empress. She's just beautiful. I don't even know what more to say about her. And the Five of Cups. Also beautiful. I love that each card is just punctuated by a single color. The palette is so simple. The Emperor. I like how he's like very Roman. And then we have the Six of Cups here. So sweet. The Hierophant. Seems very orthodox, doesn't he? There's his keys down there. And then we have the seven. So another thing I think I don't, did mention is that it's not only is it representative of a lot of body types and genders, there was also a lot of cultural diversity in this deck as well. Okay, and this lover's card. To me, when just looking at this without having looked in the book yet, it speaks to also embracing that both the masculine and the feminine within yourself, whatever degrees of masculine and feminine you may identify with. So I think it's really beautiful to speak to that. And also this is representing we look at the book. Let's see, I think I believe it's representing trans, explicitly representing trans people. These are the first explicitly trans bodies in the deck so far. I had considered making the couple cisgender, homosexual, or lesbian, but decided against it for two reasons. Firstly, I just wanted a positive and beautiful romantic representation of trans bodies. And secondly, I still wanted the card to read as queer and to subvert cisgender heteronormativity. Though the tarot frequently deals with binaries on the surface, it constantly reminds us that the masculine and feminine aspects of its symbolism are interchangeable and applicable to persons from all genders. So that's really beautiful. It's really beautiful. And then we have our Eight of Cups. Just love that shade of blue that was chosen there. Okay, this is the last one we'll do with this one. With this oracle. And we have the chariot. We've got some yellow there, gold, very traditional. Love that he has the sun behind his head there. And then we have the nine of cups. Pretty traditional. Okay, so not sure how I feel about the pairing. And the next one, let's try the Wild Mystic. This is a just a black and white, a gold deck. And maybe it will go well. Yeah, I think I like it. Ten of Cups, and two females, it's a beautiful card. And then Strength over here, I think this Strength is so awesome. I love that it's this kind of wild dog instead of a large cat. Hermit, and I love her. Just love her. And the 
page of cups. There's our fish up there. I don't know how this pairing is working out. Not that great, I don't think. And then the Wheel of Fortune. That she's, there's this naked woman behind there holding the wheel. And the Knight of Cups. I like that he's watering his horse. Yeah, I think. It's okay-ish. This oracle with this. And then we have Justice. She is amazing. And then the Queen of Cups. She could almost be the Empress, right? Okay, so let's try a different oracle because I wasn't loving that one. So next, let's try a new one. Let's try the Herbal Astrology Oracle. I think uh, shade-wise, color-wise, this is gonna go well. But it could be wrong. I've been known to be wrong, dog hair. Huh. I like that. Haven't really worked with this deck yet. That's a really beautiful card. So then we have the hanged man here, and it was a little more gruesome, I guess would be a better word. A little more gruesome with all the arrows. And then we have the King of Cups over here. Like him. He's awesome. It's pretty. Rebirth with death. It's awesome. This is more like, looks like the kiss of death to me, huh? Kind of going willing, willingly. This is some, that's a nice butt. Just saying, that's a nice butt. And then the Ace of Swords over here. Pretty traditional. Got some red, looks like maybe the swords are gonna be red. if this is a transgender um, temperance. Though I've always, I think, you know, the imagery of angels a lot has been that they're genderless or um, hermaphroditic. So there's that. I don't know. It's just me talking. And then the two of swords. I like the way the swords are arranged in that. Lemon balm archer. So pretty traditional, although uh, more anatomically correct, I think, heart. A lot of decks have done this recently, though. And then this devil. That's quite a double card. And these appear to be the lovers. Which the devil is kind of that, uh, the dark side of the lovers, isn't it? love when they have a tower and it's got all the water lapping up against it. Something about that. It's got like Icarus falling down over there or an angel, <clears throat> some winged being. And then in the, it looks like they're in the snow maybe. A little cold, kind of a cold place to take a nap. Such a beautiful star card. It's a little bit different though, right? So the star card usually pouring water on the land and in the water. And then we've got this awesome <clears throat> five of swords. 
So what do I think about this pairing so far? Let's do this last one and then we'll switch up. It's okay. It, it's not my favorite. It's also not terrible. Love this moon card so much. Than me and faces on the moon and the sun. It's a thing. So instead of having a dog and a wolf and the crayfish, we just have an owl. And the one looks like the dog from the strength card. And then here we've got pretty traditional, except the person is rowing themselves away <clears throat> instead of being rowed away by someone else. So this is, yeah, this pairing was okay. Let's try another one. Let's try the messenger cards. Let you look at the book while I get the cards out. Okay, these might be a little too white. We'll see. Oh, I like that. And then this sun. It's a nice sun. I like the two toned leggings there. And a face on the sun. And then we have the Seven of Swords over here. Judgment. It's much more up close kind of thing rather than an angel up in the heavens with a trumpet calling them up and clawing at the cloaked figure. Interesting take on that. And then with the Eight of Swords here. I like that she's tied to a tree. Makes it a little more difficult for her to escape than in most cards, but let's see, let's try some more of these. Oh, and I like the multicolored card and this seems to go really well with that. Liking this pairing. I love this world card, like this whole bounty. And then she's just fabulous. Zaftig. She's Zaftig. And then we have here we got an owl and some other kind of bird over there, another owl and a bat. And it's quite nightmarish, isn't it? And some of the cards are a little white for my taste for the pairing, but on the whole, I like it. So for the ones, it looks like we're gonna have green as our color to go in on there. And we've got a salamander here on the wand there. That's like that, very clever. And the 10 of swords, not quite totally down. Not doing great though. So yeah, the ones that are, for me, with this pairing, the ones that have more color in them seem to go better. The ones that are all white. Aesthetically, not so much. I like this guy. He's very uh, Arabic, isn't he? Got his world there. And then the Page of Swords. I like that page. more of these. Okay, so that was the messenger cards. Let's try 
couple more still. Let's try the language of flowers. Got our three. We've got this ship's sailing. They'd be clearly sailing away. And some cards, it's, are they coming or are they going? It's hard to say. And then we have the Knight of Swords there. Awesome. Okay. Feed them and the Four of Wands. That's a nice pairing there so beautiful. It's just so beautiful. It's just so stunning, this deck. And the Queen of Swords. She is awesome. She is ready for battle. And then you've got a naked five of, so of wands. Better be careful where you put those wands. Somebody could get hurt. And then the King of Swords there. Also awesome. So it might be a little pink to go with this. Seems to be a lot of... No, actually that one's nice. Victory card there. Very nice. And the Ace of Queens. I like that. I like with the wheat shafts. That's a nice take on the Two of Pentacles. And this guy is awesome. They are not going to take him down. So I like it. And it's a little bit more pink than I would choose to go with this deck. This is nice though. So we got the ones there. They appear to be going the other direction from normal. They really coming this way. Can't tell are they going down or are they going up. I don't know. I guess it's up to you to interpret. And this looks nice with these. And then we've got the three of pentacles there. I mean, normally we have three people, and there we have two people kind of directing on what should be done, and the one craftsman. And this is more like of an apprenticeship. I like that. This guy's not doing so great. He's got part of his leg cut off and it looks like back in the day you're not gonna they didn't have antibiotics. You're not gonna be doing so good. And then her. She's just hoarding everything, isn't just hiding it. There's nothing back here, nothing to see. And one more. And then we will do our last. Like that. Bringing all those sticks to town, it looks like. And then here we have our five of pentacles. They look like they're at least not just walking by. They're like actually asking for help, maybe. Is help being refused, though? Or are they contemplating whether or not they should ask for help? I don't know. Am I overthinking it? I might be. Oh, that looks nice. Okay, so I liked that one. Not all of the cards. 
None of them, not all of them worked, but a lot of them did. So the last one is going to be the Southern Gothic, which when I was looking through my binder, kind of surprised me. I almost went past it and then I was like, wait a minute, this might work. So let's see what we got. through some of these. Page of Wands. Very awesome. And then over here we have the Six of Pentacles. Very interesting. It feels like he is more of a religious figure. Not usually a religious figure, is it? Knight of Wands. Awesome. And the Seven of Pentacles. Yeah. He's planting. Is he planting or is he harvesting? He's planting. I think I like this. I don't know that I love it. But it's more muted palette in general, I think works well. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm not gonna have to find an oracle that's gonna pair with this arrow. Okay, let's stop there. So we have the Queen of Wands and she is awesome. She's got a kitty cat there. And then we have the Eight of Pentacles and that's fairly standard. A little different arrangement but fairly standard. And then we have the King of Wands. I love him. And Nine of Pentacles. I love her. The Ace of Cups. Love it. Divide these up a little since. Okay, and then we have. appears to be Native Americans, Indians, and then the Knight of Coins. And I like that he's in a wheelchair, so we do have some ability representation there. Differently abled. So pretty. And the page. Also love the page. Page is planting. And the king. Okay. So that was my walkthrough of the Feodor. Is that how you pronounce that? Is it Feodor? Theodore Pavlov. I guess that's how you pronounce that. I don't know. Anyway, again, U.S. Games, why? Why, why, why? It is an amazing deck, and I'm so glad I have it, even if it has copyright on the back. So thanks for watching. Take care of yourself. Have a great day. Remember to like and subscribe and click on the bell. And stay tuned for the giveaway video if it's still sometime before the end of 2022. Okay, thanks. Bye. And this is the giveaway video for November through December of 2022. 
and I'm not giving all of this away at once. Don't get excited. This is um, a pick your deck um, giveaway. In the future, all of these will still be given away unless okay, so the first way. deck is the Margaret Peterson. And this is the, well, it was the gray bordered version. I trimmed it. And it, I am giving away, but just because I have two versions. I, I got the um, <clears throat> burgundy colored, you know, the 25th anniversary one. So it has the booklet. And they are trimmed, and I kind of edged them in multicolor. And you can look at other walkthroughs of this deck. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. But that is what you would be getting if you chose the Margaret Peterson, and you won. And the next deck is the Enchanted Tarot. This is the mini edition. Wasn't sure if I was really going to want this deck or not, so I saw that there was a mini copy. I got it, and it just, um, it's not for me. And it comes with a little guidebook. So that's that, and you can see, do I have any cards nearby? I don't. Anyway, it's a mini. And if you want to see a full walkthrough of this deck to decide if this is what you're interested in, they are available all over the tarot tubes. So that would be the mini edition of the Enchanted Tarot. And the next one is a deck in a tin. It's the Wonderland Tarot. So it's Again, it's a mini deck, and I really, I'm a huge fan of Alice in Wonderland. And um, as I was searching for Alice in Wonderland decks before I was aware of Baba Studios or um, Dan Darcy, I got this, and I just don't need multiple ones, and I just don't use minis that much. A couple mini decks I use, but I don't. So it has a little booklet, and they are kind of like playing cards. You know, they have the number and the suit on them, but it is a full tarot. And I'm sure there are plenty of walkthroughs on this deck as well. So we won't spend a ton of time on that. And so... Yeah, this just isn't my aesthetic. As much as I love Alice in Wonderland, this deck is not my aesthetic. And the next one is The Dreaming Way. I had gone back and forth on this one a lot and didn't think it was going to be my aesthetic. And then I kept seeing pictures of it on Instagram and such. And they all look so pretty. And I thought, well, maybe I'll give it a go. And it has its own little, it's a U.S. Games deck. And um, a little bit thinner than, I think, uh, Tour of the Abyss is also U.S. Games, a little thicker. And it, I was right the first time. It, this isn't, this isn't for me. Maybe this is for you. And once again, um, there are plenty of walkthroughs on the interwebs. So, that will be the dreaming way. And the last tarot before we get to the oracles is one that I got, I was very impulsive by, and it is a Spanish deck. And it's very handmade in the vein of uh, the way Carol Herzer Makes her laminated, only it's much thinner. And you probably won't see any walkthroughs of this deck. It's Tarot Arte de Luna Rivas. So I'm going to give you a quick... I'm not going to look at all the cards. It's... Um, 
Maybe this is for you. It is not for me. Far be it from me to say what other people will like. I'm often wrong. So that is that. So a little bit of inconsistency in the lamination, I think, in the shades on the backs of the cards. Okay, so we have um, an oracle. It's a beautiful oracle, just um, it's more woo than I am, if I'm going to be 100% honest. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be 100% honest. They are big cards. It has a guidebook without pictures. And it's very pretty. It's um <clears throat> reminds me a little bit of Margaret Peterson in that the art style feels a little um I don't know if inconsistent is the right word. Like maybe it's evolved throughout or exploring different styles or um, what I mean. Some of the cards I love a lot and some of them I'm just like, I don't, they don't work for me. So that is, I'm sure there's walkthroughs of this all over also. So that is the Spiral Oracle. And the last oracle is the uh, Magical Menagerie. That's a nice big um, guidebook. It is, um, there's some spreads in it. It's cool a lot of oracles, more oracles than I use. I don't know, I don't know that I've ever even seen a video on this one. I think I found it on Amazon. And so it has keywords on it. So it has the name and then some keywords and some elements. Actually, not keywords. Just what elements it associates with, I guess. Honestly, I've never used this. And I have so... Otter. I have so many animal decks. And this has some magical, mythical creatures in it as well. It's a nice little deck. It's just, I have so many, I just can't possibly, or made, I can't possibly use them all in any realistic amount of time. So that is the Magical Menagerie Oracle. So, how do you enter? Well, you just comment on a video that you watch between, um, November and December, I think this will probably close around December 15th of 2022, and comment in it, um, Yule 2022, and the name of the deck that you are interested in winning. So those rules seem pretty easy. If they're not, comment. Okay. Well, thank you and good luck.